My name is Malcolm Ruffin. I'm the co-chair of the Sport Management Career Fair. Uh, I'm also the president of the Association of Diversity in Sport. We're hosting the Career Fair. And also I want to introduce uh, Tiffany Hartford as other co-chair. I have Nick DeChristopher, he's the Director of Sponsorship for the Career Fair. And then I have Jesse Dethridge, and he's the Head of Local Sponsorship, and he's done a great job. Um, thank you all for coming to the second annual Career Fair. Uh, it's not too long ago, it was just an idea that Tiffany had, and now it's grown to 40 organizations uh, spanning seven states. So we appreciate you all being here. I um, want to thank the Sport Management Department, because they've been a great help to us. Uh, the Mark H. McCormick Department of Sport Management, Professor Master Alexis has helped us a ton. Also want to uh, thank Teamwork Online who's partnered with us to facilitate the registration. And uh, lastly, I want to take I want to thank all the committee members that have done a great job and the volunteers. And most of all I want to thank Tiffany because she's uh, really been the fuel behind this. Uh, so, and well, last but not least, I want to thank Comcast Spectacor, the presenting sponsor of the Career Fair. Um, without them, this wouldn't be possible to, to grow the event as much as we have. So, uh, first I want to have Nick, he's going to introduce our opening speaker, Peter Lugo. At this moment, I'd like to introduce the president of Comcast Spectacor. He's also the chairman of Global Spectrum and an 81 alum from the Sport Management Program here, Peter Lugo. Thanks, Nick. Uh, I've known Nick since, what, you're about 11 years old? Uh, his son and my son played hockey together. Um, for many years, Team Comcast, they went to Nationals, they were, they were a very good team, and uh, my son uh, was recruited to play hockey, and um, his final two choices came down to obviously UMass and Vermont, and uh, unfortunately he chose Vermont, so I'm going to have to spend uh, the next day or so avoiding Tutti Cahoon. Uh, I don't think he's real happy, happy with me, but uh, it's going to be really tough. I just saw a great Frozen Four. Uh, t-shirt up here in the, in the team, so not, uh, what is it, Frozen Fenway, yeah. t-shirt, and I wanted to buy it so bad because it's got UMass on it, and I went here, and I love UMass, but I got to be kind of neutral that day, and uh, it's tough because it's so nice to see what what has happened here. We manage the Mullen Center. Uh, it's just a, a fabulous facility, and it's such an honor to come back to UMass. Uh, it was such a big part of my life. Uh, Bob Schwartz is here. Uh, we were here roughly at the same time, Cindy Stutman and, and a number of us are here. And, uh, you know, uh, I think you realize it, but it, it's such a special place to be. Uh, the education, the area, uh, the sport management department is certainly, you know, the best in the country. Uh, the facilities, uh, when I was here, uh, games were played at the cage, which had its character and was pretty special, but the Mullen Center is nice. And I see the new student center. Um, but I'm also really happy to see that the pub is still here. Uh, Mike's Westview has a different name, um, and, and some of the other great establishments where I did a lot of my uh, research for uh, my career. <laughs> In fact, Bob and I were really amazed that they actually some of the shit we pulled that were actually they allowed us back on campus today. <laughs> so to tell you a little bit about myself, um, uh, I'm from Worcester, Mass. I uh, grew up in Worcester, moved to Auburn when I was about 12 years old. Um, Came to UMass in, in 1977 uh, in the sport management program, and the program was relatively new then, but but very very exciting. And you know, as a kid, I had played hockey and, and soccer, and certainly you know number four was my number. You know, as Bobby Orr, uh, and and I kind of knew though that I wasn't going to be a professional hockey player. And my dad, who was a mechanic, somehow found a way to meet somebody at uh, Boston, the Boston Bruins. So I went down and, you know, I had my best fake leather jacket on and my, you know, then you wear those silk shirts, so I was pretty cool looking, at least I thought. Uh, and went down and uh, uh, this guy, the name is actually name is Jack Nicholson, uh, different Jack Nicholson, but he introduced me by, to a gentleman by the name of Tom Peters, who now is the Associate Athletic Director at Boston College, and he steered me to UMass. Because, you know, I wanted to get in the business sports. Uh, I was, you know, I, I want to do something around the team. I always love being in the venues and want to continue that sports career. So 
my, my whole goal was to work, you know, like any kid from Boston in the area, um, you know, I wanted to work for the Celtics, the Red Sox, you know, or the Bruins, um, preferably the Bruins because I like hockey so much. Then I came up here and got into the classes and the curricula and, you know, and, and, and really began to expand myself a bit. And, and a gentleman by the name of Guy Lewis, uh, probably one of the most important people in, in my life as it ended up to be, had said to me, took me in his office one day, I was, he was my advisor and also a professor in sport management, and said, you know, Peter, you're an aggressive guy. Uh, I know you really want to work for a team. And at that time, the teams were a little different. They were mostly family-owned. And, you know, you know, the dad may be the owner, and the son was the financial guy, and the daughter was in PR, and, and you know, the brother-in-law did something else. And it was very much a family business and tough to crack. You know, a great business, but tough to crack. And he said, you know, Peter, they're building these facilities all over the country. You know, so you got to remember at the time when I was uh, growing up in Massachusetts, and we kind of just talked a little bit about this. There was Boston Garden, and really like the Big E, that, that old barn out in Springfield where I used to go watch games and stuff. And he said, they're going to be building arenas uh, all over the country. Uh, they're starting even private management of arenas, which is, you know, really cool, where the companies will actually come in and manage them for cities. He said, you might want to look at that. Now, I went to school. If, if I didn't get a job, it was either either I get a job in an arena, stadium, or a team, or I was back at, at Ronnie Seafood, you know. And it was nice being at Ronnie Seafood, but I thought I'd do something else. And so I got I took an internship at the New Haven Coliseum, and uh, and, and Guy Lewis had said you may want to go there because there's a young general manager there, and I think he's going to start new departments. You know, one of them is going to be like marketing, group sales, and all that. Now here's a guy who really wanted to be in the business side of the Boston Bruins or maybe even a scout or something. And I said, well, that sounds good. I, I think I like marketing. And I didn't know anything about it. But I went in there, took an internship, and then got hired halfway th through the internship. Um, and it was a great experience because it, it was an open opportunity and, and I was able to get into business that way. From there, I went to the Providence Civic Center. And then in 1985, I was hired by Spectacor. Uh, we had a company that was managing arenas, and it was, we had like six of them across the country. And I came in as the director of facility management, and I was in Philly from 85 to 87. And then in 1987, we acquired the uh, contract to run the LA Coliseum in sports uh, sports arena. So I moved out west, and um, you know, New England guy going out west, a little apprehensive, and it. Ended up being probably the greatest move of my career because I had a chance to run a major facility. At that time, we had the University of Southern California football. We had the Los Angeles Raiders, who were very, very good at the time, and the uh, Los, Los Angeles Clippers. So I had the opportunity at 28 years old to run a major facility. And, and, and also at the time, which was very important, the music business was centered out in Los Angeles. So I got to know many of the top managers and agents of, of many of the rock shows. You know, whether it's U2, Springsteen, Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, you name it. In fact, you guys will get a kick out of this. I'm sure you, you like music. We needed a Christmas show one year, and you remember this, Bob. So we said, okay, let's let's get together with our promoter. So we, we got this hot, hot band that was really hot on the Sunset Strip called the Red Hot Chili Peppers. We paid $25,000 for them, which was at that time a pretty good sum of money. We were a little concerned about it. So we needed two more acts. So we played $1,500 for this act. It was pretty good out of the kind of grungy out of Washington called Nirvana. <laughs> and then the opening act is we needed to figure out, let's do three bands. You know, for, for the $25, they'll get their money's worth. Now we've got Red Hot Chili Peppers. We've got Nirvana. So we got this pretty cool band that we, was kind of making a little scene. For $500, we got Pearl Jam. <laughs> <laughs> And that was our Christmas show. I, and, and, you know, I had a chance, when we, we toured down the spectrum, I had a chance to meet Eddie Vedder. And, um, and I had said, you know, hey, Eddie, you did, our, you, you did our Christmas show in L.A. And I still, I still wish I had that contract with your signature on it, you know, from those times. And he goes, so you're the bastard who paid me 500 bucks. <laughs> he remembered. And he was really nice. He was nice to me. And, and we remembered how fondly that that was the first big gig that they'd ever played. But if you remember, Bob, 
you know, you guys have been to concerts, and if there's three bands in an arena, usually the first band, the poor band you feel sorry for because they're basically played on an empty arena. You knew these guys were something special when they overran the chairs for the first act that we paid five hundred dollars for Pearl Jam. So obviously, the, yeah, Eddie Vedder was a special guy at the time. Uh, to get on quickly with my my career, um, and then in 1993, I was asked to come back and run the Philadelphia Spectrum, and begin to uh, work with the Philadelphia Flyers on the business side. Uh, and then around 1998, I was named uh, president of the, of the whole company. Um, and, and I think, and, and I'm going to talk about this a little later, but if, if, if you can remember my, my career, because if you re I was the guy who wanted to either be a scout or the Boston Bruins, and I kind of took a funny path, but now the Philadelphia Flyers report to me. So I think it's a lesson to be learned, and I'm going to talk about that a little later. What I'd like to do quickly for all you guys, because you guys are here looking for jobs, I would guess, right? In futures, that's the most important thing. It's all about you today. I'd like to give you a little overview and I'll just run a little video uh, of our company. Uh, 